as you discussed yesterday. So let's start with the setting of the Kubernetes cluster using the QBDM method. Kubernetes cluster with QBDM. So this method has no restriction. So that uh, we can set up only in a cloud or data virtual machine or in a uh, or physical VM. So anywhere we can set up. So in the cloud, in a virtual or physical environment also. So let's visit the official guide. What it says. So here we can check the all the prerequisite. So here uh, this requirement, so prerequisite, we need a one or more machine running in the dev or RPM Linux OS, for example, Ubuntu or Send OS, and we need a minimum two GB or more of RAM per machine. Okay, then. and then at least we need a two cpu so as we discussed that kubernetes we at least need one master node and one worker node or we can call it as slave master and slave or in kubernetes terminology it is master and worker node and all our microservices runs on the on only on worker nodes master is just controls the all the cluster so, and this, we need a full network connectivity among all machines in the cluster. So you can use other public or private networks. So, and these are the prerequisite to set up the Kubernetes cluster using the cube ADM method. Then we have the instructions. So here are uh, some more steps to configure the Kubernetes. So in any method, so for the, Setting up the cluster is uh, some lengthy or more steps, okay, than the any other. Like uh, if you want to set up the Docker and any tools, so there are less steps. But in Kubernetes, we have the couple of steps more. So all the steps I have noted in the. So here it is show the all the commands. So I will show you. So here I have the steps I have noted down to set up the Kubernetes cluster on Ubuntu 20.04 using the kubeadm method. So here are commands are separated commands to run on the master node and master and worker nodes and commands to run only on the master node. So let's start. So here I have logged into the my AWS account so as per the official page, so we need a two CPU, at least two CPU and two GB RAM for each instance. That is master and worker node. Hey, hey, uh, Sivdash, how we can do it on our machine? Okay, so I recommend is that create a one free tire AWS account. No, if I wanted to go like, uh, you, as in the beginning you said, like uh, we can do it on any machine, physical machine, right? Yes, so if I want, yeah, yeah, so. So you need a two machine. Yeah, two machine. So virtual machine is fine, right? Yes, virtual machine. Yeah. So either either you can use, uh, there is a Oracle virtual machine or some, there are uh, VMware. So there we can try. Okay. So, so, but again, uh, you need, uh, so you have to learn how to set up the virtual machine and to to virtual machines, uh, or you can use the Oracle virtual machine also. Okay. So, okay, let's start. So, or we can use the AWS free tier. So AWS free tier offers uh, seven fifty hours per month 
This is a two instance free. It includes the P2 and P3 micro. Then also other services which are free. So you can take advantage. So let's start. I was having my account, but it was expired. Like uh, uh, 12 months of exp uh, I've been already thinking about it. It's no problem. So you can create another account with a different email ID. Okay. So same like uh, I did. So last year I was using different account. This year I'm using different. And if you go for the billing also, so very, very less billing. So we are working the for our team and it's bill only the seven, 378 till now okay so and we are doing the more practices and more machines we have so some machines are in the stop state also okay whenever we need we, we can start so this is affordable either azure or, or aws no problem so let's create two instance so I think uh, I am considering you know the how to create AWS EC2 instance. So here, yeah, uh, just a second. I think Parovin is not aware about this one. So that's why no, that's what I'm just wondering. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. so is, once we log yeah. to the AWS, so we can see the all the AWS services to create a server that they name as the EC2 Elastic Compute Cloud. So same name in Azure, we have the Azure via Google Cloud, they have the different name. So like this, or in digital ocean, they have the booklet, something cloudlet. So different names. So EC2 is to create a virtual machine or server. Okay, for for now, we are using only this service. Okay. Then it contains it contains that hard disk like this. So that we call it as EBS follow, but yeah, we'll be creating the same means uh, by default one. So that option will create. So once we log into the here, we can go to all the AWS services. Then we have to search the EC2, means Elastic Compute Cloud, same like a VM, okay, virtual machine, or server, anything, as you call it as, or as, for, as our system. So here we have the, once we search for the EC2, so here we have navigated to the EC2 dashboard. Then we, here we have the option launch instance. Okay, our launch server. Then here we have the option. Here we are using the Ubuntu Linux OS, and which is here we can see the option free tier eligible. So there is no charges for this free tier eligible Ubuntu server 20. Point, which is the latest latest Linux Ubuntu OS. So let's select this. Here we have the option the instance type T2 micro T2s small these are the types which contains the it categorizes basis on the vcpu memory storage network performance all this so here minimum we need a two cpu and two gb ram okay so category is t2 medium so let's select this t2 medium then we have next click on configure instant details here when we create a aws account free tier aws account so aws offers the one free vpc and subnets vpc same like you have the router okay you are connecting broadband you are the router okay same like uh, vpc it contains the default vpc and default uh, uh, subnets okay it it will give the three three subnet so here we'll select the default one then we have option to select the hard disk okay or here we call it as EBS volume. Uh, let's give the EBS volume 15 GB. Then click on add tax. This is the optional. And next configure security group where we will open the default security group which provide about the AWS with the free tire account. The here we have the option to open and close the ports. Means we can inbound and outbound rules, whatever port number required we can open this but, and, uh, this security group uh, have you created or uh, this is uh... this yeah, this is given by the aws okay okay yeah this is default when we create a free tier account it will mm -hmm. put some ec2 free tier ec2 instance vpc rds s3 so all here you can go to the official widget site for 12 months mm -hmm. 
and all the services are listed here. Okay, okay, yeah. Let's fit Okay, yeah. And next option is a review and launch. Mm -hmm. Click on review. So to create a VM in the AWS, so we have the seven step: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then last is launch instance. Here we have the option creating the key pair. So here I have already created key pair. That is password or key pair, but generally recommended method is to use the key pair. I same as it is a method like RSA token. You are using as a developer, you will be using the RSA token. Okay, same like we use the to authenticate it. That VM, we use the key pair that contains the one some secret file or some certificate. Then click on launch instance. Then view instance. So we have created one only, one instance. So here we will give the name just for our understanding. Okay, let's create uh, one more instance with the same configuration, same repeating steps, same one to OS, then same instance type, then configuration details, same default VPC subnet, then add storage, then 10 GB, then add tax, this is optional, then configure security group. Let's select the same security group for the two or both instance, then click on launch. Select the key pair. I have given the name key pair. Okay, this is Docker. This is not something related with the Docker. Just I have given the key pair name Docker. Okay. Then click on launch instance. So here we will give the name worker. So we have created two instances with the same so one for master and one for worker so here let's connect to the master and worker node so here we will get the launch instance here we will get the private public instance id public address private address same like for any some instance suppose i run the same reform on my system if i run ip config so here i will get the public and private addresses. So same like for in AWS instance, we get a both public and private IP addresses. So we need a public IP address to connect from the external. So let's copy this public IP. Then here I have downloaded the PuTTY. So you know all of these things. Then here we have to copy the public IP address. Here we have the option SHS. Here then after expanding SHS, here we have the option auth. Here we have to give on the PEM file that already I have created in AWS. And then click on yes. Then default username for the Ubuntu EC2 instance name is Ubuntu. Let's into the Then let's connect one more instance. Then let's open the putty. Then I'll select the key pair. User name is Ubuntu. Let's increase the font size. So 
So to create a key pair, so here we have the option to create a key pair to authenticate VM. So here we have the option create key pair. We can create a RSA type, this one, then PAM, PPK file, any option. Then we have to create key pair. And this key pair we can use while creating the instance. So here we have already key, created key pair and same we are using for the both instance. So here we have connected two instance using putty. So here we have the common command to run in both master and worker node. So first we have to update the package on the Ubuntu OS. So here in Ubuntu, APT is a package manager for Saint OS and React. We have the YUM package manager. So let's update the package. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Shudas, uh, can we run this APT update on production? Where? On production environment. Yes, we can. So no, but uh, uh, but it should be run by infra team. If infra team is managing this. Yes, uh, yes. No, but so, yeah, yeah even if it is infra team, okay so what i understand from this apt get update okay so it updates the modules that what we run no miss there is a one two commands update and upgrade so we should uh -huh. not run upgrade we can run update so what what it does there is one more command upgrade uh -huh. so that we should not run because it upgrades the versions all your packages os yeah os packages so update okay. we can run yes yes okay Let's start on the both instance. Okay, okay. okay I have connected CMIP in both. So, Clear the screen command is clear. Then next command is we have to install the Docker because Kubernetes is a Docker container orchestration engine. So first let's add the Docker GPG key on the both master and worker node. Then next command is to add the Docker official APT repository. So this command I have copied from the Docker official site. Then for in Linux base OS, whenever we update the any repository, so we have to update the, we have to run this command to update the to take effect for this uh, latest repo, we have to run again update command. Then, so next command is to install the Docker CE, CE means community edition, then CE CLI, then Dot io. 
So as you, yes, we have seen that we need a container runtime package also. So let's install both and master and work on uh, why, why we need container C and CLI? Docker? Sometimes we have to interact with the, with the Docker CLI commands. So that time we need mm -hmm. CLI. And the last one? It, it coming upcoming session, we will see this. And, and last one? Container at IO. Yes. The container runtime command. So this is command they have it in the latest uh, Kubernetes setup. This is called it as a container runtime. Okay. So here, if we see this, our last PPT. This is container runtime. Software plugins such as Docker usually perform this action. So let's clear the screen. So next command is to add configure the CG group driver. Okay. So here we can visit the official guide. So this is recommended by the Kubernetes. So we have to configure the CG group driver also. Okay. So they have given the instruction. So we can choose anyone. Yeah. What is the CG group? So CG group driver. Uh -huh. uh, this is system D driver is recommended by for cube EDM based setup. Okay. So that's why they are recommended to configure this. This driver for this QBDM method only. Mm, but but what is that group does? So it uh, because now in the recent uh, in the recent session uh, version of the Kubernetes, so they have depreciated some features. Okay, for do containers, container provider. Okay, so for Docker and other containers. So if you want to run these containers. Docker on the Kubernetes, so they, they recommend this driver. Okay. So some depreciated feature, and they upgraded some features. So like the one more feature, the CG group driver. So which controls the CG group driver of the kubelets. So this is used for the kubelets. So they are recommended. So we have to go through the in details. Okay. So for this, I have covered this instruction to configure the CG group driver for the Docker. Let's run this command. Then fifth step is, so they have recommended to enable the Docker service at the system startup. Okay. Otherwise, it will give the warnings or errors. You are not enabled the Docker service. Then next command is we have to reload the Docker demand service after enabling this Docker. Let's clear the screen. Next step is we have to restart the Docker service. Then, then we have to update the package once again. So this till the seventh step, these are steps for only for Docker. Okay, Docker setup configuration. Okay, so because uh, we have to run the containers on the Kubernetes, so that's what's. So next, now it come for the to add the to set up the Kubernetes and required packages for the Kubernetes. 
So first package is two. These are the general packages: HTTP, CA certificate, and curl. Okay. So curl is if you want to download any package on the Linux base OS, either you can use curl or wget. There is some CA certificate. So while setting up the cluster, you generate one freelance encrypt certificate. So that's why we need this package. And then HTTPS, if you want to access or something download an HTTP based package, then we have to install this package. So let's install three packages. Then next command is as we added the Docker official GPG key, same, same like we have to add the Kubernetes official GPG key that I have copied from the Kubernetes official site. Then let's add the Kubernetes official APT repository because we have selected Ubuntu OS. Uh, we are doing everything on the worker and mass, right? Yes. So here, so here I have mentioned separated commands run in both master and worker node. Okay. So all the commands to run on both master and worker node. So after adding the official, Kubernetes repository, we have to update the package to take effect. Then we have to install the kubelate, kubeadm, kubectl. So Q, as we yesterday we have seen that kubelate is an agent or interface to come which is communicate between the master and the worker node. Kubeadm, we have selected the QBDM method. So that's why we have to install QBDM package. And kubectl is the command line interface for the Kubernetes cluster. So let's install these three packages. Then we have to hold the current package version okay or being upgraded so whatever we are installing the version of this current package so we can we have to hold so next command is sudo apt mark hold so it if we were trying to upgrade the package then it will not upgrade okay. it will hold the current version so that's why this is a command We are freezing the versions here, right? Yes. For being upgraded. Okay. Mm. So this all set up for 14 commands we have done. We have to run on the both master and worker node. Mm. Then these are all the prerequisites we have done. Then so we have the two instance. So we have to select which one we have to use as a master and which one we have to use as a worker. So as we have a label okay, for our understanding. So this IP 4.169 we will select as a master. 4.169. So first that node we have we have selected as a master node. So we have to initialize node as a master. Then command is sudo kubedm in it, then pod network. Then we have to give the one IP address range. Okay. So for example, if we set up, uh, if we set up the router in our home, we set up the one private IP address range like 192.168.1.0 or slash 24 slash 16 or like this range. 
you know these things so same like in kubans also we have to set up the one network shared here if you not mention it will select default but generally in a best practice we have to set up the one range so let's select this private ip addresses command is to initialize the master node node as a master then qbdm in it then we have to specify the pod network and ip address range so let's run this arm as we selected the one master node uh, so that's that the ip address the cidr1 okay what it is exactly is that can we put it as like anything that what we wanted or it should be always 10.0 or something like that there is a class a b c d e and some classes are reserved for the private mm -hmm. so this ip address is from the a class a address so either uh, mm -hmm. if you say this So these are the range A class 0 to 127, B class 121.91, this class. Mm. So I just share you. No, but uh, initially what happened, you know, uh, the company take their own IP addresses, like they will take the CIDR range. Yes. So, so setting up the cluster, we have to understand. Uh, so first we have to understand so which VPC you are going to use. Okay. So this cloud ops team will inform you, you have to use this VPC in a cloud. Okay. Or if you don't have the cloud, then you can select any addresses from this class. This class, A class, B class, C class. Okay. So this cloud team has given us this VPC you have to use. What next? So this range starts from 172. Now this range from zero zero start from the zero 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 is reserved for the public zero to one twenty seven I understand but yes. as you said like the day of like day of team or the cloud team ask you to use this VPC go back to the AWS yes so this AWS and the, uh, this range starts from one twenty one one seventy two yes Slam. they are they have asked us to set up on this VPC. Yes, they will ask this setup. So we have uh -huh. to use range. So we have to use that 172.31, right? Yes. Can we use can we use this then? Instead of going for 10.10.0.0, .10 can we use this? Okay, you can use anything. So I, I already initialized this one. Okay. So so but that range is the one that we have to use. So we can use any range. So this is the internal IP address. So, so it will not means that we, we should uh, this will be not used for the external okay this is for just in uh, just internal if you not given this also now then no problem okay so here it is saying that so in the once we run this command so it will install the our the like a cube adm in it will work without port yes, network yes, yes 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 Okay. We'll try in the next method. Miss one more time. Okay. So if you face any issue now, so I will we will connect on the zoom and we will try. Okay. So it will create the kubelet package control manager scheduler all the components as we discussed yesterday. So it will create all the components itself on the master node. Okay. Then it is saying that your Kubernetes control plan or master node is initialized successfully. Then to start using your cluster, you need to run the following as a regular command. So we have to copy these commands. So here already I have copied as this instruction also mentioned by the Kubernetes official guide. Okay. See this. So same like we got the output. Then important is things we have to keep this token securely anywhere okay. because this is one time generous token if you lost it then again you will be get problem so that i can we can reset but there is a there are more steps okay, to generate the one more token so for now 
let's save this token so should ask like uh, for the saving this token okay this token once we have the set up the cluster do we need it in front in future in once we have the set up the cluster we should have the cluster this token no. okay, then uh -huh. let's read this output okay so what is saying we have to run these three command after this mm -hmm. alternative if you are the root user we have to use this command okay next go then then it is saying that we have to apply the pod network also. Okay. Pod network means, for example, here I will give the example. If we purchase a laptop from the store and we bring back to the miss, we bear, came to the home, then our first task is to install the OS. If not install, then we have to connect our laptop to the network. Then we have to install the network plugin. So same like here, after setting up the cluster, we have to set up the some some commands then we have to install the network plugins okay then if you want then you can join any number of worker nodes by running the following on each azure root okay so this command we have to run on the worker node to join this worker node to our master node so for now if you added the one worker node in the future if you add the more worker node then we need this command okay so that's why we have no, to no no now my task is over like i have added 10 worker nodes in my master control plan okay now i don't need any future cluster so do we i need this key to for any future reference so i don't i my clustering is everything is done cluster is ready okay you yes, don't, yes, yes, sir. then you don't need okay if you want don't want to join after ah. then you don't need but in future, after six months, if you got requirement that you want to join your worker node into the cluster. And if I wanted to remove one node from the cluster? Yes, so I will tell you. Okay. So there we can directly remove the kubectl delete nodes and uh, there is command. So I will still save. So I have saved this token. So we have to run these three commands on the master node. Six months I have copied. Then we have to create a one. I will tell you what is the purpose of this directory. So this directory used to store the all our cluster configuration. So in every whatever our installation method so all your cluster configuration are present in the home directory in dot cube folder okay home location dot cube directory or folder we can see let's create a directory the next command is we have to copy the this admin dot config to the dot cube config so we will we will see this what is actual inside in the config file then we have in the ownership permission for the current user then to check the nodes okay master node is ready or not then command is kubectl kubectl is a command and interface for the Kubernetes. So same like in MySQL, we have the MySQL prompt. In Postgres, we have the PSQL prompt. So same like uh, here to run the all the command using the command line interface. Here we have to use the kubectl. To check the node, com command is kubectl get nodes. Here we can see that one master is ready, control plan or master and status is not ready. Because now same like we have installed the OS to connect our network. We have to install the network plugin. So for Kubernetes, there are a number of network plugin providers are available. Okay. Some like I will say you. So there are many.
or we can network plugin or we can see the CNI. Let's see the list. This uh, channel, this this flannel, then calico. Okay, these are the all the view. These are the all the network plugin provider. So same like for our Windows, we have the Intel or something AMD like they have the network plugin also same like uh, some their network plugin provider. So let's configure one of the network plugin. So here we are configuring cube panel. Okay. So I put this uh, panel also network plugin provider for the Kubernetes. Okay. It works on the L3 network layer l3 layer let's apply this yml then we will check the status okay so the that yml is applied so now let's check uh so that this panel is uh, widely used or uh, calico so we can use anyone so but what is the use like because i so, have seen it for the calico Yes, 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 yeah, you are correct. So I am also using the Calico. Mm. This uh, next cluster will be using the Calico. Here just uh, in recently, they have upgraded the QVDM methods. Okay, so in Calico, we saw some issue. That's why we are replacing this. So now, before that, after installing network plugin, before it was a status not ready, now it is showing the ready. Okay, so our master is ready then so we have then we have the worker node this worker node we have to join to the master okay then we have to run this command as a root user as per the instruction so here we have to give the sudo because we are set up the cluster using the normal user let's copy this and let's copy in one line What, what is it from where we got these tokens we copied from master node okay so join yes from master node we have copied that i have shown so let's run this this we have to run on the worker node so see this this node has joined the cluster and certificate signed request was sent to the API server and response was received and the kubelet was informed of the new secure connection details then run this command on the control plane to see the node join the cluster so go, let's go to the master node let's run the sorry let's run the command kubectl get nodes now we can see that one master and one worker so in the QBDM method, it does not automatically relabel okay, this method. So this is disadvantage of this method. So we have to explicitly relabel these nodes. So we have to relabel. Re so label this node as a worker. So there is a command. So this method also not uh, widely used. So let's copy this name of this node. Now we have retabled. Now let's get the command. Let's get the screen. So here we can see that one is the master node and one is the worker node. So in any method, Kubernetes cluster configuration are in a home directory. So our home directory is home Ubuntu. PWD is command for present working directory. So to check the, we have seen that it's present in the dot queue. To list out the hidden files, command is ls a. Then we have to go to the cd dot q. Then we can see the config. So let's see the this config file and config. So for the our Kubernetes cluster, is set as the API version, means API server version. Then cluster is certificate authority data. 
then our server is https then tube api server port number is 6443 so we have to open this in security group the name is kubernetes then user is kubernetes admin then current context config then it will generate the two client certificate data and client key data this information we later need to add in jenkins or gitlab server to adding the cluster so so this is all about the setting up the Kubernetes cluster using the cube ADM method. So, uh, uh, Shuraj, okay. what, what is there? What else is there in the cube along with the config, or is that the only config we have? So whatever we have this configuration, that is only this is common for the all the installation method. You know, go to CD cube cube directory. ls okay only config only config okay Good. Good. some other also in cops also e case they will create one more also that we will see we will see one by one so and we can differentiate how the installation methods okay so what we did we have created two machines uh two machines and there we uh we installed kubernetes can you uh just little bit explain last yes. part Yes. So we have created two uh, EC2 instance as per the okay. MS Office. Okay. Then we have installed the required packages, means okay. Docker and Kubernetes packages, our required settings on the both master and worker board. Then okay. we have selected one instance as a master. Then we have initialized that node as a master. Then we okay. have. Uh, done the configuration then we have installed mm -hmm. android plugin on the kubernetes master node mm -hmm. then then we have joined work means one more node to the master node okay uh line number 54 and what is that cubic uh cubic control apply on that planet, uh, planet, this, planet? Is network plugin. this is network plugin okay uh why we are using this one means exactly so as you see in that after setting up the cluster, so our cluster status was not ready. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. Because we had not installed a network plugin. So network okay. plugin is to communicate to the all the inter components of the Kubernetes. So that's what okay. network plugin. Okay. So this is required that, means everywhere this is required. Yes. Okay. So method we have to install the network plugin. So uh, there you showed I think three four types of network plugin over there. So anything we can install? Yes, yes. So as uh, Anup said, Anup, no? mm -hmm. so yeah, Anup is a mostly user. Which one? Uh, channel uh, this channel then Calico this one. Hmm. Calico, okay. Yes. But uh, this is also depends on means. Uh, what they ops I mean, team yes, or yes. someone depend or... depend upon the your organization so are they okay network plugin you are using or they want their recommended so okay but if yeah. you go for the aws eks now i will mm -hmm. EKCTL. So I will tell you more. So this AKCTL recommends one more plugin that I will show you. So this this is also EKCTL is given by the one of the network uh, plugin providers. Okay, that uh, we'll be seeing this one. <coughs> view view okay so this eks tell given recommended means aws recommend to use this eks tell and this package is given by the view plugin okay so depend upon the i'm means i was going to say that depend upon the requirement how they are mm -hmm. they are recommended or which is feasible okay mm -hmm. okay okay but uh all are freeware is it? Yes, 
Okay, okay. Yeah. You wanted to see yourself as a free and open source. So then, yeah. yes. Okay.